My name is Tom Jacobson, and I'm the director of a nonprofit organization, RDI, here in Great Falls. And I want to talk to you a little bit about some of our experiences that we had going from what was Consumer Credit Counseling Service, or CCCS, when I started, and what kind of brought us to where we are today. And how we did that was a series of asking the right questions. Um, when we talk about asking the right questions, we can think about it as, I guess, the best example, think about a meeting that you've been in. Think about a time that you've you know, uh, been at that table, a conference table, you've had people around, and when you left there, I guess the question I would ask is, do you feel energized or did you feel exhausted? Did you feel like you just wasted two hours of your life and never really accomplished anything? When we ask the right questions, they generate generative dialogue. The right questions bring about uh, unity and, and uh, systemic thought and bring us to the place where we want to be. But too often, we get trapped by asking uh, the, the simple questions, the yes or no questions. And we get stuck in strategy and tactics. And we don't really understand where it is that we're, that we're trying to go in the first place because nobody's ever articulated that. Um, I'll tell you a little bit how we started in RDI. We, again, we, we were consumer credit counseling. I was brought on board, and the organization was struggling. There had been a lot of things that had happened over the years. Uh, there had been changes that had happened externally that were outside of uh, their control. And they brought me in probably mainly because I had knew nothing about credit counseling. I knew nothing about any of it. I knew something about program development, I knew something about budgets, and I knew a little bit about planning. But I didn't really have any preconceived notions. So when we came in, we sat the board down, we brought in some partners and some community partners, and we brought some people around the table that also didn't know anything about credit counseling. But instead of asking what new project or what's the, 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 the new program that we can come up with that will, that will energize us or that will uh, help us to grow, we stopped. And we asked, what is it that we really want to accomplish here? What do we want to create? Why do we want to create it? By asking the right questions, we went from saying, uh, being an organization that helped people become financially responsible, to one that promoted and helped people become, all people become financially secure and economically independent. Now that may not sound like much, but it's actually a pretty big difference. Responsibility is more about, uh, are, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I making bad choices? But economic security really speaks about um, assets. If, we're, if I'm financially secure, I've got a home. I've got transportation. I've got a livable wage job. I'm, uh, I'm, I've got choices. You think about that, if you were to plot that out, on the other end of the spectrum, financial insecurity, would mean that I don't have a home, I don't have shelter, I don't have clothes, and I don't have food to eat. So that broadened what we could do because we recognized that hunger isn't about a lack of food. Hunger is about a lack of money. Shelter isn't about not enough houses. It's about a lack of finances to purchase a home. So that broadened us where we could do just about anything in that continuum to help people become secure and have a home. Now, that doesn't mean that we're doing, we're opening food banks, but that does mean that we can refer people for food, we can refer people. When they come to us, we get more people to come to us so we can refer them back out. We can get more people uh, to address their budgets and their debt and, their, and, and save them out of bankruptcy and to save them out of foreclosure. You know, financial responsibility, if I'm, if I'm a working class person, just like most of the folks here in Great Falls, and I don't have health insurance, I don't have enough health insurance, and I'm living paycheck to paycheck, and my appendix blows, that's not because I'm not being responsible. So when I lose that appendix and I'm out of work for two weeks because I'm working two part-time jobs and I don't have sick leave, now suddenly, um, what do I do? My, my finances are a mess, I'm looking at foreclosure, I'm looking at getting kicked out of my house. So we can help people stay in their homes, we can help them keep their keep their homes, keep their uh, kids in school, keep their uh, food on their table, all because we went from asking wrong questions to asking the right questions. Um, 
I, and one of the things you'll hear me say, and my staff hears me say all the time, when we get bogged down in those, in those strategy questions, I always ask, is this a means or is this an end? And I'll, and I'll talk about that here a little bit more. Um, good questions um, also challenge our assumptions. I think every three-year-old knows this. And, and a day like today, I can say, I can say, you know, Bobby, we're going to go outside. I want you to go outside and go play. He wants to go outside and go play. So I'll say, you got to make sure you put your boots on. And what does that three-year-old ask? Why? Well, because it's cold outside. Why? Well, now this is about the point where my brain locks up because of my personality. And I start thinking, well, it's cold outside because we're in the middle of winter and the sun is at this angle and the earth's rotating at this position. And by the time I get done diagramming this out, Bobby's out making snowman. But they do challenge that assumption. We had another thing. Once we kind of got on track, uh, the Kellogg Foundation, you know, Kellogg Cereal, they worked with us and they said, you know, we want you to go out and, and develop some policy initiatives. We really like where you're going. We want you to go across Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wyoming. And we want you to start building a future. And we said, you know, well, you know, so they said, right, they asked us to write them a grant. So we wrote them a grant. We laid out every single problem that we could identify. We, how much poverty there was, and how many rental houses lacked plumbing, and you name it. And what did they do? They kicked that proposal back, and they said, we didn't ask you what your problems are. We want to know what your future is. What do you want to create? And that just knocked us back on our heels. We've never been asked that before. So we went out and we brought together doctors and farmers and ranchers and university professionals and, and homemakers and, and mechanics and you name them. We got the most diverse group of people. We'd have about 50 people in the room. We'd split them up and put them at tables. And again, instead of asking them, what's the biggest problem you have? What kind of policy initiative should we implement? Should we put forward to try to, try to, try to change, these, change our, our community? or fix our problems. And what we said was, what do you want for your children and your grandchildren 50 years from now? We bypassed all the assumptions. We bypassed all of the uh, uh, strategy questions. We went straight for the jugular. What do you want for your future, for the thing that's most important to you, that's more important to you, to your children and your grandchildren? Well, that broke down all the walls, because now it's not about agriculture. It's not about hospitals or universities or education or, or low-income housing. It's about what do we want to create. And once we got to that point and we could, we could bypass all of that, we realized that no matter what background we were, no matter what uh, denomination we were or political affiliation we were, we all really wanted the same thing. We wanted safe communities. We wanted intergenerational connectedness. More than anything, no matter what community we went to, or tribal, or reservation communities, or Wyoming communities, or the Dakotas, people said, we want our kids to be at home. We want a community where we have livable wage jobs, that our kids can stay in, that they can feel safe, that they can they scroll up with their grandparents. Wow. What do you do with that? How do you create policy around that? Well, what we realized was to have that, to have a healthy community, then the transportation folks needed to work with the hospital folks to create that. So they didn't have to just work on that one thing or they get siloed into another thing. The hospital folks realized they needed to work with affordable housing. And we all needed to work toward livable wage jobs because without that, we could not create the community that we wanted to create. We could not have what we wanted to have. We had to work systemically. As the Kellogg Foundation put it, raising the level of the lake. You cannot be truly successful if you only focus on one community or one region or one initiative. You have to raise them all, which sounds daunting, but the, 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 the main takeaway is we've all got to start working together. And again, it's because we started with the right questions. When we ask the right questions, right questions are proactive. The wrong questions are reactive. Okay, what are the right questions? The right questions are what? What do we want to accomplish? Why do we want to accomplish it? If you can get those two down before you jump into the how or the where or the who, that's how we get there. We, we talk about it, I used to talk about it in logic models where we'd say our goal is 
You know, you can start by saying, well, I want to create this program that's going to make this change. We don't even know if that change is what needs to happen. So we start with what we want to change, where we want to be, and then we build the programs into, into that. It's kind of like building a house without a set of blueprints. And we bring all the contractors together and say, just go build a house. Well, is it going to have four bedrooms or two bedrooms, six baths or one bath? Everybody's vision of that house is going to be different. Until we define that, until we articulate that, until we ask those right questions, we can never start building the house and creating the community or creating the home that we want to create. Think about it when I was down in the legislature. Politics, and what they said, I think the best thing they ever, I ever heard down there was if you could take the politics out of politics, we could actually get something accomplished. And that's true. What we did was, when we were in Helena, you think about that, there were 2,000 bills to read We'd sit in a committee, and all you do is for bill after bill after bill after bill. What's that bill? Is that a mean or an end? We never ever sat down, and I don't care how far right or how far left you are, we never sat down and said, what do we want to create? What do we really want to create here? What do we want for our tax system in Montana? What do we really want for Montana as a whole and for our citizens? And How can we start building strategies through policy to get there? We never asked that. That's why we get wrapped around the wrapped around the axle all the time. We, because you can debate that all day long, that my idea is better than your idea, because we're down here in the weeds. But we never take it to the extent that we, because nobody's going to argue about what we want for our children. I, I don't think there's anybody that says I don't want my children to live at home with me, or live in. Uh, I don't know if they want to live at home with me, but I don't want to live in my community. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want them. Uh, well, we don't want it. Everybody will agree, well, yeah, I want intergenerational connectedness. Any, anybody, do you think, on what side of the other is going to say, I want my communities to be unsafe and violent? No. We all want to go to the same end. We all have, if we can articulate that, we can break down these barriers. But until we get to that point, we're going to be, te we're going to be wrapping ourselves around the axle. I'll give you an example. Let's take us through this one more time. So let's think about this. Why, why do we have, let's talk about how we can plot out this, this uh, the whole TEDx session. So is, is my talk, or the talks that we're going to hear today, is this event, is this a means or an end? Why do we even come here? What's your purpose? Why are you here? Do you value information? Do you value the, 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 the things you're going to learn today? Okay. Why? Well. Maybe I, you know, we want you to take these things home. Sure. Why do we want you to take these, these ideas home? Well, why? Well, I, because I want, we want to maybe share these ideas. Cascading ideas. What does cascading ideas mean? It means sharing these ideas and letting them grow. Why do we want to do that? Because we care about our community. We want to build a stronger community. So when we end, now I kind of took a, a strategy and, and rolled it forward, but it, we started with that end, how can we build a, a better community? And we started identifying backwards and asking those how, 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 we can come to this as a strategy. I took a trip here recently um, after the legislature to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. This is an example right now of how not to do this. Because I went down there with a bucket full of strategies about microfinance loans, working with government, um, how we can uh, you know, build this better life. And I brought all of my ideas down there to say, here's how we're going to fix things. <coughs> well, what I never did was ask the people that were there, what do you want? Because down there in the Congo, in, in the, in the uh, Chikachi, which is a little village in the heart of the Congo, you know, there was no real enterprise or commerce. There was no, you know, people were still living in mud huts with, with, with grass roofs. They didn't have, they lived on about a dollar a day if they could trade that. Um, but what did they have that we don't have here? A sense of family, a sense of community. Because they all had to work together and live together. So the things that we don't have here, I think, at the times, are the things that they inherently have there. So is to bring in uh, economic development into the heart of the Congo really the true answer? What were their needs? What I found out, which I was actually now grateful for, all my ideas, my, my planning, 
went belly up. I didn't have the, the, the people I was supposed to work with on microfinance loans weren't there, and that couldn't work out. The governor was out of town that he was supposed to be there, and I got to sit, uh, I ended up sitting, you know, I say sitting on my hands, but I had nothing really to do, which is the best thing I could do. Because I got to talk to the people, I got to be the, the support role, and get to really know what these folks needed. And you know what they really need? Food, safety, shelter, public health. Completely different than what I wanted to do. So now coming back gives me something to work on. It gives me a better understanding. and gives me a much better appreciation of who I am and who we are and where we want to go and how it gives me an example of what our community can be like. So I'm going to leave you with this. Um, it's a quote. I don't know why I'm reading it there. I'm looking it up. Dr. Seuss said, sometimes the questions are complicated and the answers are simple. Take the time. Ask the right questions. Challenge your assumptions and create the future you want to be.